In this series, I'm painting a randomly selected Space Marine Legion in a randomly selected style. This time... Dark Angels. Okay. The style I'm going to be painting in is going to be... All right, I've always wanted to do this. The heavy metal style is simply the in-house style for Games Workshop miniatures. It's what you see on all the box art and in all the official releases. And it's actually really quite easy to define. Lots of edge highlighting, lots of panel lining, and not really any gradients to speak of, apart from in a few cases. Painting in this style is actually unique amongst all the styles that I'm tackling in this series, because Games Workshop provides you with lists of paints to recreate the style. This wasn't an artistic exercise. Painting in the heavy metal style is basically an exercise in technique, and as it would turn out, Patience. I should mention, by the way, that if people were expecting to see this video last month, I took a month off this project to paint other things than Space Marine. So I painted this squig buggy, for example, for my Hawaiian orcs, which I think looks pretty awesome. It's probably the most like characterful kit I've ever worked on. It was great. But with that done, I started on the Dark Angel at the beginning of August. I assembled an intercessor in about as neutral a pose as I could manage, and the only bit of airbrushing I did was to base coat the entire model in Caliban Green. As I said, Games Workshop provides you with the paint list to recreate the style, so the armour for example was Caliban Green, shaded with Nuln Oil, though I made my own black wash, and then you are highlighting with Warpstone Glow, and right on some of the edges, Moot Green. And getting the balance right of this edge highlighting step was probably the most difficult part of the challenge. Difficult because you didn't want to overdo the extreme highlight with Moot Green. I did that at first and I had to dial it back. But also getting the highlights as thin as possible across literally every edge. What I ended up doing was the two highlight stages, the Warpstone Glow and then the Moot Green, and then I would cut into those highlights with the Caliban Green to get them as thin as possible. Now this works if you have like a block colour for the armour like you do in the heavy metal style. I genuinely don't know how you would accomplish this if you had something more interesting like a gradient underneath. Uh, I guess that's a technical challenge that I will eventually have to come to. <laughs> hey Google, turn on the lights. My lights apparently betrayed me in the middle of recording this. Like the dark ain't- Anyway, I was talking about edge highlighting the armor. As I said, this was an exercise in patience because there are just so many edges across every little part of the model to do. And frankly, it felt like this model took a lot longer than the other models in this series. I don't think it did. I think this probably was about 15 to 20 hours. It was probably about the average for the models I painted so far. But this step dragged and dragged and dragged and I was really ready for it to be over. Fortunately it did eventually end and I can move on to some other components like the metals which were very easy to paint, just lead belcher and then a wash and then uh, iron breaker and then I think storm host silver as the extreme highlight. Everything was done according to the Games Workshop plans including the leather, the ribbing between the bits of armour. The one exception actually was the red gun casing which uh, they had down as uh, corn red then wasdaka red and then a flesh tone highlight. I thought that looked wrong compared to the pictures, so I actually did it as uh, Wazdaka red and then I glazed Baal red on top of that to really punch up the saturation and then gave it the edge highlight with flesh tone. And that seems to match the actual photos from Games Workshop. And that's actually an interesting point. This was the first project and I think it will be the only project in this series where I had a one-to-one -one comparison. I had pictures of Dark Angels intercessors that I could look at and see where they place their edge highlights. And in some cases I actually had to take my highlights away and put them back on because I realized I put them in the wrong place or as in the gun casing I realized that the colors weren't quite right which again meant that this wasn't terribly artistically challenging it was just a technical exercise which isn't bad it was just different. To be honest with the armor done it was then just a case of picking out the last few details like the eye lenses and the gold and the metals and things like that and from going through this process I have a whole new level of respect for the heavy metal team because it took me 15-20 hours to do this one marine and I cannot fathom doing an entire army in this style. The studio painters are heroes for having to do this for every chapter, like a hundred times over. But for all my bitching, I'm very happy with the result. I think he looks like an heavy metal Dark Angel. The base is wrong because I didn't have exactly the right colour for the rims, sure, but I wasn't really 
it, this isn't about the base, it's about the model. I realised that this video has been less about the steps I took to paint the model than normal, but that's because frankly you can look up the steps on the Games Workshop website, which is what I did, and I think it's more interesting just to, to take a bit of a step back and talk about the heavy metal style and I guess what it taught me and maybe what you could learn from doing the same thing. As I already said, it gave me a whole new level of appreciation for the work that the heavy metal team do, but I think the thing that it really taught me and I'll take going forwards in my painting is precision and a whole new reference point for I can paint to this level of precision, I can make it look exactly like the photos and I improved some of my techniques for, for example getting the edge highlights as neat as possible but it's just knowing that I can do this and that going forwards maybe I can strive for this level on power armoured models. Very glad that I painted him, it wasn't as enjoyable as some of the other challenges in this series but I do think it taught me a lot and I'm going to be interested actually to try and apply some of the edge highlighting techniques I think to models going forward. I think this has actually swung my, my personal style slightly back towards the heavy metal style. In previous videos I felt like it swung away. So yeah, I guess it'll be interesting to see how I next paint a powered armoured model when I'm not doing it as part of a challenge. But uh, I am still doing a challenge, so I need to find out what style I'm going to be painting and what legion I'm going to be painting next time. Next month I am going to be painting... White scars. Never painted white scars before. White, famously very difficult colour to get right. So this is going to be an interesting technical challenge, just getting the majority of the colour of the armour right. And the style I'm going to be painting in is going to be... Oh, okay. This is possibly the most technically difficult one. How are we going to do that? I've got a whole month to figure it out.